So we have our matrix created and I want to now code it so we can support this matrix data in our template. At the end of the day, our template will look something like this. And there'll be a little bit of a homework at the end for you to create this recipe snapshot. So we need to now go into our template code and start to define our matrix template. So this is the recipes entry template that I created in the last video where we set up our matrix and defined the fields in our recipes section. So as always, the first thing I want to do is do an extends and I want to extend layouts slash main and define my block. I just have one block on this site right now, but we could have multiple. And then in here is where I'll put in the code and content for this recipes page. So let me go into my static template and you can get these on the uh, course page. And that is under recipes and then recipe detail. And I just want to grab everything from the breadcrumbs down to just before the footer. It's going to be a bit more this time since we have these different blocks. There we go. And copy that and then paste it in. Now, as before, I want to make sure that this is rendering properly as a static site or a static template or almost static before I start building out the matrix. So if I'm on my perfect espresso drink page and then I'm going to go to recipes slash perfect espresso. And I know that this is going to be in the recipes template directory. And this is the slug for that first recipe I created. Then I get this rendering of the static code. Now everything above this, all of this up here is going to be dynamic, including the footer but everything else in here is still static. So we want to light this up and make this matrix field come to life. So in our template, we'll start always at the top here with our breadcrumb. Now we're in a standard entry in a channel section. So we can just do entry.title to get that. Change that path. And again here as well for the title will be entry.title and we'll leave the category hard-coded for now because we're going to come back to that later. So if we reload, you can see everything is dynamic up here now. So we don't have this, so we can add it. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give you the homework after this video to create the field for the snapshot and for this as well. It should be pretty straightforward for both. What I want to focus in on is the stuff starting with the image and all of the content below that. That's going to be driven by the matrix field. And we'll start right here. This photo, this div right here, this is a block in the matrix. So what we might want to do is as you're coding this is just to make some comments. We can call this the image block. And you can also even put in the actual name of it, like recipe image block like that. And then end recipe image block, something like that. And that way we know exactly how, where the boundaries are for the different blocks. And we'll give us some space just so our code can breathe a little bit here. And now we want to start working with the matrix. So a uh, matrix is a set of blocks. So I have to iterate over the blocks. And then because each block is going to have its own markup, I need to check for the block and say, if it's this block type, please show this markup. If it's this block type, please show this markup. That's kind of how it works. And we can have multiple instances of that same markup because we can have multiple instances of a block type. But the first thing I need to do is iterate over all of the blocks in the matrix field. So to do that, we use a for loop. So we say for block in entry dot recipe contents. And then we need to do a end four. And I'm going to keep moving this down as we go. And the reason I'm using recipe contents is because this is the name of the matrix field. So if we go back here to our settings, our fields, recipes, 
it's right here. This is the handle for that field. And we're going to iterate over it, all of the blocks, and check whether we have instances of those blocks or not. If we do, we'll display the markup. Now, at this point, I have two options. I could say if block.type, that's an attribute for block, which is the, the type of the block, is, let's say, recipe image. And that would be referring to this right here, recipe image. If it's that, and I'll just do an end if, and just back these up a little bit here, and we'll back that up too. So if the block type is recipe image, I want to show this. And then I would have to go through each one and do if, then show this, if, then show this. And that works. I can go back here and reload this. And it'll work, right? It's just going to show this here. And that's just fine. But there's actually a better way to do it using switch statements. Because I just want to switch on the block type and then use cases for each of the different blocks. And that's really the cleanest and the best way to go. So instead of doing if block, I'm going to set up a switch statement. So I'm going to switch on block.type. That's going to be what I'm going to switch on, the value of that. And then I'm going to set up cases. So I'll do case recipe image. And instead of end if, I'll do end switch. And so if it's the case of recipe image, it's going to display that. And I'll just take this stuff and move it down as we go into the rest of the content. So we'll save that, reload, and we have the same thing. We have the image here. So let's go ahead and light up the rest of the template and all of this will fall into place and be in perfect order. All right, so I have my recipe block. So I have case recipe image, and now I can work within this block. So for the image, we're going to output the image itself. So inside of here, I'm actually going to fetch the image up here. I'll say set image equals block.image1 to get the image. Remember, images are collections. And then here, I just have to do image URL to get the image URL. And if I wanted, if I have alt text for the caption, we just do block.image caption. And because this has some markup and not every image is going to have a caption, I might want to say if block.image caption and if like that. Let's take a look at our front end. Reload. All right. You can see it's dynamic here. This is the time to drink one I created right there. So let's keep going. And this is the other dynamic one because it's another of the same. All right. So that is my image block. And that is done. So I'm going to move this down and now include, looks like this is a block of rich content from our redactor field. So let's do that. So I'm going to make this a comment field here and we'll say this will be so recipe copy block and end recipe copy block. And then we need to do our case. So we'll do case, recipe, copy. And then inside of here, we're going to drop in the field for that copy. So let's look it up. So if I go here to recipe copy, it's body content. And I just drop that in to block.bodyContent. And that's going to output the markup and then we'll end the switch and end our for loop. Let's take a look. We'll reload. All right, there we are. So we have our initial copy on the page, an image, some more copy, and another image. The rest of this is hard-coded in the template, but now we're dynamically pulling in copy, image, copy, image, and it's in the order that we have set in the entry. And I'll show you that at the end. So let's keep going. All right, so here's a table going to take my end switch and end four and just move it down to the bottom of the table. And so this is another block. So what is this? This is the ingredients. So I'm going to make some comments. We'll say recipe ingredients block. And then we'll end that down here. So it's clear where this begins and ends. And then we are going to do our case. 
So case, recipe, ingredients. And now we have to fill this out. So we have to kind of do the internals here. So this is a table and this is our header row. So we'll leave that. And these are our actual data rows. I only need one set to iterate over. So I'll get rid of the others. And then here I'm going to iterate over the ingredients. So I'll say four row in block dot ingredients. And again, this is how I defined the name of the field. If I go to recipe ingredients, here are ingredients. And then there's the ingredient for the column and then the amount for the column. So for row and block ingredients, and then for each of the columns, it'll be row dot amount and row dot ingredient and four. And that is it. And we'll just do end recipe ingredients block in the comment. And now we should have this populated as well. Let's take a look. So we'll reload. All right. So it looks like we have row ingredient row amount. So something isn't right here. Let's take a look. Aha. Uh -huh. Curly braces usually help. These are the output tags in Twig. Definitely required if I want that to be processed properly. There we are. Now if I reload, there we are. 22 grams of ground coffee, four ounces of hot water, and one espresso machine. And this is pulled right from our entry. And you can see that it's ordered right where it is in the entry as we defined it. And then we're flowing in our next copy and our next image. And you can see how this is going to work. It just dynamically pulls those in. So let's keep going. We're going to move our end switch and our end four. These are the steps. All right. So we'll only need one set of steps. So let's define our recipe steps block. And then we'll end it at the close of the div here. And now I want to set the case. So we'll say case recipe steps. And this is going to be the title. So this will be block dot steps title. And then for each of the steps, we're in a table. We have to loop over them. So we'll say for step in block dot steps content. I only need one of these and four. And then this is going to be the step. So step dot step instructions. And again, I'm getting these here, steps content, and these from our matrix settings. So if we go back over, you can see recipe steps, steps title, steps content, step instructions. Steps title, steps content, steps instructions. And then we're ending our recipe steps there. And I need to drop over here my end switch in four. And this is another one of those images. We can remove that because we've already handled images. Here's another steps one. We can get rid of that because we've already coded that. And here's another steps one. Get rid of that. This is a tip. I have one right here. We're about to handle so I can get rid of that. This is content, just body content. We can get rid of that. And we've handled all of our matrix field blocks except for the panel tip. So let's do that. So we'll take our end switch and end four, drop it down, and then add our comment here. And this is recipe tip block. And then we're going to do our case. Case recipe tip. And we have our block and then we just need to put in our content. So it's going to be block dot tip content. And we have our end switch to end the switching between the different case statements and end four closing divs and closing our block. So we'll save that, come back to our site, reload, and there we go. So you can see, I have my different steps here, preparing your workspace, grinding the coffee, Here's a tip and here's an image. So that's how we use the matrix field. And it's pretty cool. I can show you here in the entry. If I go to the recipes, perfect espresso entry, and then click on the preview button, it's going to load that entry template by default, although I could define extra entry points there. And 
you can see the, all the different blocks. Now, if I go in down here to let's say this preparing your workspace, and I want to move the tip above the first step, drop that in, and you can see it's going to automatically reload and add that in as well. And if I wanted to create a recipe step above, I could do that and add it in. And we could say buying good coffee beans and add instructions. And you can see it's dynamically going to pull those in. Go to the Whole Foods Market. There we go. And then I can also reorder these too. Maybe I want to buy things first. Or maybe I want to have that image up here earlier between the tip and the other content. And I can do that. And of course, I can create another image above here and add it. Just say it's the iced coffee one. And you see now that's there. So now I have two images. Maybe we'll put the tip in between and so forth. So you can see how we can reorganize and sort of make this content really dynamic and allow it to have multiple different content types. And then the content authors have all sorts of flexibility for making the content as interesting as possible because they can use all the different fields that you gave them and make multiple versions of them and then reorganize them however they need. So that is how we use the matrix field and how we code it in our Twig templates. It's a really powerful way of working with content in Craft and definitely one of the main reasons that you would want to work with Craft if you're doing content that would take advantage of the matrix field.